In this one, we're going to be discussing how to do custom query sets as well as custom managers. Uh, these are model query set and model managers. Um, so what it allows us to do is kind of have calls that are better for any particular thing. So in the case of our marketing message, we should say marketing message dot objects get featured, something like that instead of all of this, right? It should bring back one featured object. Maybe we'd still have dot message, but at least here it'd be get featured. Um, and then also we want to make sure if we did have dot all that it's going to be an active marketing message, right? So this would be true. Uh, so there's a few ways to actually go about making all of this stuff happen, but we're going to do it by using custom managers as well as custom query sets. Um, to do that, it's fairly straightforward. First of all, we're going to declare our query set. So it's going to be marketing message query set and it takes models.query.query set. And we're going to define active. So this is just basically all this is doing is getting our active marketing messages. So return self dot filter active being true. All right. So it's not hooked up to the model quite yet. That's because we want to create custom managers. So a custom manager will hook up the model to these custom managers. So right now what we have when we want to use a, some sort of manager, this dot all gives us back a query set, right? So if we want to customize that dot all to being only the active stuff, we'll go in here and do class marketing message manager and it's models dot manager. And then we're, first off, we're going to do define get query set of self. And this is going to return the marketing message query set using the database self dot model or excuse me, using the model self dot model. So self being the inherited class. And then it's going to be using self dot underscore DB. Uh, this is using our database essentially. Um, all right. So now if we want to override how the active or excuse me, the all is we would then come in here and go define all self and we're going to return self dot get query set and then active. All right. So active, of course, being this. So what this is doing is it's getting the query set and it's using this call right here. And then from there, it's getting active and it's going to do self filter all active being true. Uh, so that gives us all of ours. All right. So so now all we need to do is tie this manager in with our model. And to do that, we just go objects equals to marketing um, message manager with the parentheses just like that. Uh, this allows us to call objects dot all and it'll actually work. Now we could also do, let's say, messages equaling to the same thing. And we'll see what that does in just a moment. So now it's all tied in. Now, in order for me to use a custom manager, I have to do this. Um, if I don't have a custom manager, then um, I won't need this and it will have all the default Django custom managers in there. Uh, there are already still the default managers, So you'd still be able to do filter and all that stuff on the actual query set. But um, this allows us to at least customize it. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. We'll go into Chrome and we'll refresh in here. We go into this marketing message and I'm going to make it inactive. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to add a new marketing message, say another one. Another one is here now. I'll say this one's active and also say it's featured. So we save it. And now if we go back in, we see it says another one is here now. All right, so let's log out or well, we don't actually have to log out, but let's go back into the admin marketing message and let's have um, it active but not featured and then the other one I'll do the same save it and if we go back to our home page here we see that that marketing message is coming through so let's actually make it inactive or make both of them inactive and see what happens so that one's inactive and this one is inactive now it goes away. 
cool. So now that actually works. Before it didn't actually work. So that's good. Um, and another thing that we talked about was this other one, messages. So this is a completely custom message or a completely custom manager. So we could change this to be in messages. And let's make one of them active again. At least one of them. Go to active, save it. There we go. So that's what allows us to do with custom managers. I'm actually going to comment this one out because we're not going to use that. We're going to stick with objects as the convention. Um, all right, cool. So now that we have this, we might want to make sure that um, on all, all are definitely going to have to be active, but then we're, we might want to have featured ones. So define featured self. And we could do return self dot get query set active and then filter featured equals to true. Now this will get us the featured ones and we actually could do uh, filter active being true. Capital T true. Um, we could do it this way, but the bad thing about this is what it's doing is it's first going to filter it and then it's going to filter it again, right? So it's kind of like uh, I only get the active ones and then I filter it again. So if I cut this out and go this way, then it's going to get the featured ones and then get the ones that are active. Now, in some cases, this might actually work just fine, but realistically, using the query sets, it's going to filter it out for sure and not in any specific order. Right, so in this case, it said featured equals to true, and then it filters out active equals to true. Well, what if we filtered out um, featured equals to true, and then a date, and then perhaps a uh, then active being true, when that's just taking a lot longer, and it's and it might actually remove some of the the ones that we want. Um, so that's why you would use query sets in this case, because uh, we could, like I said, could do this, or we could even do return super. And it would be marketing manager self just like that. You can also do this and that would still yield the same type of result. Uh, but it is a lot better to do something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. So dot active and then I'll do dot featured. So we need to make a feature and I'll copy this and paste it in here. And I'll call this featured featured equals true. All right, so this is now getting it where it's definitely going to get the featured, at least the featured set of them. Now we might want to get the single featured item, uh, whatever that's going to be. So we could do it where um, it's like set up to a certain one, right? So like in the middle where we just grabbed the first in the object of the query sets. So let's say, for instance, I want to get get featured item. So I'll do to find get featured item and I return self and then this time I'm going to get all these and then just do zero or try that and do zero and accept I'll return self dot query set featured so it's or actually an empty query set we should do or an empty list all right so basically what this is doing is it's going to return a list item. This is going to return a zero. So if there is no featured one, so if none of them are featured, then it's going to return just an empty list, or we could just say return none. Um, so if it gets a featured item, that's what it's going to do. All right, so now how do we use this specifically? Uh, it's going to be the same as all, but now we just do get featured item. And so in our middleware, we'll do objects, and we'll call this, give it all that, and do get featured item and that is now going to be taking place of what we've done so now it's going to get the featured item and it's going to give us what that is now we might have it later where we want to have multiple messages being shown at, shown at some time uh, but really like it's not likely that you're going to rotate messages here right it it shouldn't be at least you shouldn't rotate messages constantly up here if you want to rotate marketing messages it might be better on a carousel or something like that you know those images that rotate here. This should be like, you know, you one off every once in a while using type of thing. Because if you go overboard with it, you might just annoy users and that's something we want to avoid. 
All right, so now get featured item should work, right? So, and then it's still getting the message because of how we have it set up. Um, all right, so now if I refresh in here, it goes away and let's actually see why. So if we go into our admin and we go to marketing messages, we go to another one. This one's not active or featured. We go to this one, it's also not featured. So let's go to another one and just hit featured, hit save. And I'm gonna open a new tab to go to our local server. It's still not working, right? So it's still not showing up because active is also not um, in there. So if we refresh now, there it goes. So now it's active and it's featured. And then if we do active and featured on the other one, which one comes up? It's the other one. And that's because of how it's ordered. So um, right now the ordering is basically how it's, it's ordered by when it was added into the database, right? So um, each time you actually save an object, it, it creates an ID for it and it's linear. So the first object's ID is one. The second object's ID is two. So let's actually see that in the admin. So this one right here is object one. This one is two. So if we click on it, we see it says one here. If I go to two, it goes to two. So it's default gonna order by that. So by default, it's gonna get the very first one. And that's because of this, right? So it's getting the very first one on the list. If I change to that, and we went back in here and did a refresh, um, it's gonna give me the other one, right? And that should make sense. Um, so maybe we wanna change the ordering to like, you know, start date. All right, so before we jump in, I uh, added some basic dates here. So go ahead and uh, save them in. You can just do today, now, today, now, and then just kind of change these up a little bit. Save this and then go into the other one. Uh, same type of thing. Let's do today, now, today, now, and then I'm going to change this to like 08. All right, cool. So now that we've got these dates, uh, the start date here is a few months ago and then the end date would be today. So let's actually change it to being like, you know, a little while ago. Okay, so now we've changed the dates and they should work fine, right? So, but we want to actually order them by the start date. So the start date being, uh, we want the, the most recent one. So the one that starts now or soon to now should be that one on top. And then the one after that should be after that. Um, so before I actually show you how to do it as far as a query set, let's actually do it in the admin so you can see what I'm talking about because it's a little confusing just talking about it and not seeing it. Um, so we'll go into our marketing admin and we'll do list display. And then we're gonna put a list of our fields that we want to display and also the order of how they're gonna display. So the first one is Unicode. And then the second one is start date. And then the third one is end date. Okay, so Unicode being um, this right here. and all the other ones are fields within the model. So start date, end date. So you could also do updated, timestamp, all that stuff. Uh, we might as well show active and featured on here too. Active, featured. Okay, so going back into our admin, we now see that we have all this stuff. So if I wanted to sort these by start date, I click on start date, and this is showing the oldest one first and to the to the newest one. So oldest being like it's it's been uh, like the start date is a few months ago start date being uh the newest one being this right so that is signified if we go into our models would be order by start date so right here this is how that start date is done it's doing the oldest one first to the newest one last so if i want to reverse it so if i click on this and i wanted it reversed like that then I would just put a minus in front of this, and then it would actually change this ordering uh, on how these are rendered. Um, so that is something that's kind of useful for us to do, when, especially when it comes to something like what we're doing here. So now that I've got that order date reversed like that, um, this will allow me to do all types of things with this get featured, right? So the start date, it should show it only if it's actually like, the, the newest one should be shown first, right? Not the oldest one. The newest one should be first. So if it starts 
like newer or, or it's a newer featured item, that's when we want to. That's the one we want to show. So going in here, we see that it's at, or well, we actually don't need to go in there anymore. It's active and featured. So this is the one that should show up first. So let's go ahead and refresh in here. And if we've refreshed, it says this is the, right? So this is the, if we changed the start date for this to like, let's say for instance, January, save it. Now this is the, is one down and we refresh in here, it's no longer there, right? So now it's actually going off of at least the dates that we set um, for the ordering. Now, of course, there's one thing you should note that, well, what if today is not in these dates? Should it even show this? My answer to that would be no, but that's getting a little bit more complicated and it will be how we actually update this right here, the query set itself, on how it's actually even gonna show featured items, let alone how it's gonna be ordered. Um, so that's something that we'll do later with the query set. But for now, we've got it working to where it's gonna be the ordering of the date that it starts. And then we might also wanna have it greater than or, or less than the end date. So it's definitely have gonna be greater than the start date. Today's date will have to be that way. And then uh, it's gonna have to be less than or equal to the end date, right? So that's something that we'll do in the future because it's just you get a little bit more complicated and then it also has to do with our current time and stuff like that too. Um, so we're not gonna touch that quite yet. Uh, but this is actually a good start as far as having a better featured item query set. This is also how you do marketing managers um, or excuse me, model managers and model query sets or custom of both of those. And it's fairly straightforward and you can change how all of these things are. Um, if you had a user here, you could also do filter user underscore underscore username equals to J Mitchell three, right? So we could do something like that if there was a user model here. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that and just see what happens. Well, nothing happens because um, we ran an error on this call right here, right? Because there's no field named um, user. So let's actually see it outside of the try block. I recommend that you do this. If you ever see us do try blocks, try exception, um, sometimes it doesn't work and you're wondering why. This is a good way to test why it's not working because the try usually will have an exception that will just override what this is trying to do so nothing, no error raises. So if I remove it out, it'll say none type has attribute message. Okay, well let's get rid of message and see what happens then. And still saying none type has attribute message. And now it's not showing anything. Um, so let's actually go print. Let's go ahead and print this. So what we're doing, change pages to get rid of that. Print this, copy that, print it, refresh in here. And we still, we're still getting none. Right, so, so it's gonna be where get featured, right? So get featured item also has a try block. So that's where we're seeing this being an issue. So again, getting rid of the try block, copying this, pasting it in here and refreshing. Now it says cannot resolve user into field and that's because we don't have a user on here at all. Uh, so that's also another way to kind of test things out a little bit. I'm gonna just undo everything here just so we go back. Uh, but that's another a nice little note when you see try and accept blocks because I know just because of how much I've used it that this might run an exception because there might not actually be anything there, uh, which is okay. So then that would just say none. Uh, but for you guys, when you see try and accept, you should practice getting those errors and seeing how you can overcome them uh, by looking at what the error is. So this something like this, well, it's going to show you kind of where the error is happening and then another place of where it's happening, and then more specifically where it's happening right there too. Sometimes it does show you where the actual error is, um, and other times it will not, but it will show you something like this. And this is one where it's like, oh, well, something's wrong with my model manager um, or my query set or how I'm doing a call for my query set. So like this is a call for my query set. Um, and, and how I'm doing it is error, it was error prone and that's because of this right here. So I'm gonna delete that as well. Okay, so that's, uh, that's custom managers and query sets. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, let's keep going.